shot. Come on. Yeah! Leaves it. Good evening, everybody. We are back here for the Stepladder Finals at the 2023 PWBA Pinehurst Regional. I'm Chase Kaufman alongside Chuck Ritchie Jr. We are ready for the top four Stepladder, and Chuck, it has been one heck of a day. We started <laughs> out by looking at the other regionals that have happened this year, right? kind of basing off those cut scores to figure out a cut score we might see today, and boy, we you, were you, way off. You could have. Everybody was way <laughs> off. You were way off. I was way off. Patrick was way off. Everybody in the chat was way off. I, I think we expected it to be low, but we did not expect the cut to be this low. No. The cut was minus today. First place was minus. And now we are here in our first match with Carrie Smith and Amber McLeod. All right. Amber starts out going through the face. Amber's going to be taking on Carrie Smith here in this match. Carrie is the three seed. Winner of this match going to take on Summer Jasmine, and then the winner of that match will take on Naja Owens for the final match. And Chuck, give us a little bit of a rundown here between these two ladies here, Amber McLeod and Carrie Smith. All right, Amber McLeod is kind of local flavor too. She's from Conway, South Carolina. Uh, Carrie Smith is from Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Summer Jasmine from Beckley, West Virginia, and Naja Owens from right up the road in Raleigh, North Carolina. She's a uh, state superstar for sure, and uh, she is the number one seed in her second ever PWBA event, and here she is bowling for a title. So it's yeah, second be event, her other one, the Queens, the right? The Queens, yes. Okay. So it's going to be an exciting exciting matches tonight absolutely amber starts out with a spare picks up 310 the hard way yeah we want to thank everybody for tuning in here at the step ladder finals carrie smith steps up now nice shot there nice it's shot. been an interesting day for all four of these competitors all have kind of qualified in a different way here into the finals starting with naja owens naja was much better Later on in the day, Naja went 217, 206, 215 to finish out at minus 19. Very impressive given the fact that she was minus 19 overall and led to go yeah. plus 38 for her final three games. Summer Jasmine, a little bit of a different story for her. She started out super strong, had a 260, the high game of the tournament in game number three, really slowed down in game number six where she shot 125 and then really just grinded it out in game seven and eight, 183 to 198. And then Carrie Smith went 207, 174, and she needed a double in the tent to get to minus 61. And then Amber McLeod, 242 in game seven and a 179 in game eight brought her here to make the cut by just two pins. Yep. And that was the problem all day. There was no, if you missed a little bit right, the ball just never saw it today. Yep. And it got worse as the day got on, too. Absolutely. And this is your pattern. They are bowling on 42 feet. It's about 2 to 1 ratio. It's a tough pattern whether it looks like it or not. Uh, as Chuck just mentioned, when you send that ball out, that out of bounds is dastardly. That yes. out of bounds is not helpful at all. There is absolutely no forgiveness out there. And Buller saw that all day. And you can tell by just looking nice at the scoreboard. Up. Yes, very nice there. Carrie stays clean. It was a tough pattern all day. Typically what you'd see throughout tournaments like this and a pattern like that is when they start around that second arrow, they kind of create a little bit of a misroom for themselves, at least for later on in the day when they inevitably move left right. and kind of bounce it off that little break point. But there wasn't a lot of surface being thrown, and that's really what was key to not having much misroom out here today, yeah. especially in the later parts of the day. Well, I mean, you know, there was a I tell you the truth, there was a lot of surface going down there and you, you look at the pattern and you look at where everybody started today and you would think, okay, around game 3, 4ish, the pattern was going to blow wide open, everybody would go left and start bouncing it off of, you know, a burn mark, but it, it just never it never materialized today and it was, it was just odd to watch how mm -hmm. tight these lanes kept getting game after game after game. It was like they were pushing the oil from the front to the back and they had like 10 feet where it was burned up 
but the pattern, it seemed like it, it extended an extra four or five feet. All right, Amber McLeod goes seven, two. Second frame, a little split. Actually, they need to change that score because it gave her seven, one. Patrick Martinez is still here in the building doing his fine YouTube work. And of course, you can subscribe to his channel at the PWBA YouTube channel. PWBA Tour, at PWBA Tour. And of course, don't worry everybody, everybody's favorite time of the day, we will have some giveaways to do. So stay tuned for that. Absolutely. McLeod trying to get back on track. Yeah, just and misses a, just a tiny bit to the right. right just a tiny bit right there, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you even saw from the the shot on the left lane, she seemed to just barely miss a tiny bit in, yeah. and she splits. And that was kind of the thought process all day of why these bowlers really struggled. Yeah, well, and, you know, two-to-one ratio, I mean, you've got to be pretty accurate, but, you know, it's still you have you should be able to create just a hair more room but it, it just, it, for some reason today, it never materialized for any of these bowlers. And she covers the spare. Kind of ran through the end of the day for Amber, but Amber started out going 195, a really solid game on this pattern. 168, 200, so a solid start. Slowed down with 159. Jumped back up with the 233, slowed back down with 148, jumped back up with the 242, and then finished with the 179 in which she had to mark down there and get good count on her 10th frame just to get into this spot. Brianna Rogers really, really came on strong at the end of the day. 216, 204 to go minus 78, missed yeah. by just two pins. She shot 640 the back three, and that's unheard of of what everybody else was bowling. Here's Carrie Smith. Comes and rolls the rolling. two, all right. Rolls it. So this is an interesting thing because Carrie Smith finished her day on this pattern and gave her a nine up there again. They'll have to change that. She finished out the day on this lane. Yeah. And she really couldn't get anything going. She didn't strike for the first seven frames, struck in the ninth, got the first and the tenth just to get into the 170s. And I don't think she knew that she was in by 17 pins. I don't think I would have either given that no. the cut dropped about – 20, 30 pins after game seven to game eight. Yeah. So a really interesting day for Carrie Smith. Interesting day for everybody. Yeah, interesting <laughs> for everybody. And you don't even have to bowl for it to be an interesting oh, day. Oh, I know. Right, here she goes. Smith up Gets 14. Yeah, and it holds there right there. Up 24 now, Carrie Smith. Yep. Of course, you can take a look at all of these regional events on PWBA.com. There are nine of them this year. This is the fifth of the year, and the winner of this event gets a really special prize along with the cash, of course. They'll get to compete in the PWBA Regional Showdown to be held in Winter Park, Florida, later this year in December. And more on that in just a second. That would be fun. Oh, she got that one right. Yep, that one has and no it, shot. No shot whatsoever. And as I was saying, the best part about that PWA Regional Showdown, the winner of that showdown will have their entry fees paid for an entire season on the PWBA National Tour. So a very, very cool product that the PWA is putting out here for regional competitors to give really some new faces a chance to shine and give themselves the opportunity to bowl on the National Tour to see if they have what it takes. All right, she goes more direct at it and covers it. Converts. What are you seeing out there, Chuck? Does she need to do anything? Or is it just, just that tough of a shot where you just got to really hit your mark and bear down and be accurate? I mean, the only thing I could see her having to do is just I would move a little bit right and just keep the ball in front of you. I mean, it seems like she's going up there, dropping her shoulder a little bit and leaking it two or three boards to the right, and it just never makes it back to the head pin. The first four regionals of this season were won by Ashley Rucker. That was out in Dallas. Andrea Bear won in Allen Park. Caitlin Simpson in Spokane. And Elise Bolton in Parma Heights, Ohio. Yeah, she kept that one more in front of her, but 
I just, you know, I just think she's in the wrong part of the lane right now. I think she's a little too deep. Yeah. Yeah, I, w I, w I would tend to agree. I feel like this is kind of where we saw a lot of bowlers finish up later today. They yeah. did re-oil here, 17 and 18, and we saw a lot of bowlers start the day around that 9-10 area. We did see a few people inside that third over. You're right, she does seem fairly deep for where, uh, how, for how fresh this pattern is right now. Yeah, yeah, because most of, most, of most of them started, you know, yeah, around 9-10. And she looks like she's about 13, 14, 15 at the arrows, and she's actually leaking it right. Well, she's converting her spares, and all hope is not lost just yet. No. She does have a 60 in the fourth, a spare in the fifth, but Carrie Smith can capitalize on her double right now. She throws a strike here, then she can just jump into uh, stay clean mode. Don't give her any openings. Yep. And stay clean mode, I think, probably was the motto all day for every single one of these bowlers, nope. especially in those last four games. Yeah, at least after game two when everybody was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? <laughs> That's a good shot. And she... Yep, just a semi-flat 10 there. Got the seven out. Yeah, she's keeping the ball more in front of her. She's not swinging it to the right. Yeah, let's take another look at that, and we can kind of diagnose it a little bit. And she, yeah, you're, but you're exactly right. She's just playing a little bit straighter mm -hmm. than Amber is right now. And you can take a look here right around that 13 board, but she's not sending it out. Her, yeah. her plan right now is just to play straight up 13. She's really not bellying the ball much, if at all. Just giving her the best chance to hit the pocket and hopefully double like she did in the third and fourth and just leave some single pins like she did in the fifth. Absolutely. Winner is going to be taking on Summer Jasmine. And Summer, I would definitely say, was the best bowler on the fresh yes. out of the entire field. She went 223, 186, 260 in her first three games. So yeah. Summer is, uh, I wouldn't say she's the favorite because she's the two seed. Now she's got to win one match. But Summer probably has the best look just looking at scores on paper here today. But again. Now yeah. she's got a 50% chance of winning. She's got to yeah. win one match. Summer's got to win two. Yeah, it was interesting watching her warm up on this pair, and she was playing way far right compared to the other ones. Mm -hmm. And her ball looked pretty good going down the lane. So we'll see if if, uh, if that works for her when she gets up here. Yeah, and you can tell Carrie got tugged that one in, got away with it. Yeah. But, again, that's kind of what you're – I wouldn't say you're hoping for, but that's why you kind of play straight up is because when you pull it a couple boards, you're still playing straight up and you're still going to be able to – stay within that head pin whereas ash or amber excuse me mm -hmm. is swinging it a little bit more and on this kind of pattern where it's so tough when you start swinging that ball and you miss by a couple boards it, it's, it's dreadful just, yeah it's it's not easy want to thank everybody out there watching we appreciate you guys it's a wonderful sunday evening here in aberdeen north carolina love the bulk bulk TV community are, are just awesome. Here she goes. Uh, ball change here, and she's still, you know, she's still now she's trying to help it to the pocket, mm -hmm. and yeah, she's uh, she's she's struggling. Yeah, and that one so did look a little <laughs> looked a little closer to Carrie's line, but right. I think she's just a little a little too high on that one. Maybe just a couple boards left would have been perfect. Yeah, she's so afraid of, of giving it a little bit of room to the right that she, now she's she's trying to pull that shoulder around and everything's going to be left off her hand now. Yeah, that one was about 15 to 15. <laughs> really had no chance, and it looks like they're waiting to respot the 10 pin here. Change on the, the yeah, 10. They got fix well, they got to fix the score and set the 10 pin, and we're good to go. And while they're getting respotted, we have three giveaways to do. We have a t-shirt, we have a signed badge, and we have a mega signed badge. So we're going to do the t-shirt here first. So let's just do that giveaway while well, we got a little bit of time and we can kind of talk normally here. <laughs> All right, bowl TV t-shirt giveaway. And you guys know the drill. Once that submit button pops up on your screen, make sure you hit submit. Make sure you're out of full screen and here on the main. Here we go with the t-shirt. And here we go for the spare. 
quickly it respotted. 310. Cannot convert. It. Yeah, she's getting a little frustrated now. Yep, she's going to need a lot of help here now. Yeah. You love points. You love giveaways. <laughs> yep. Still waiting on my uh, Jordan Richard autograph. Oh, yeah. That I was denied by Patrick, but I still got the email. So we'll see if it comes or not. Ah, some, that was a good shot. She got a nine pin, yep. but that was a good shot. She, she kept it in front of her. She moved a little bit further right, and she didn't help it. She let the ball do the work down the lane. Here's another look at that shot, and you kind of tell she hits over 14, 15 like she did in the last shot, but this one she sends it out just a little bit. A nice straight line, and unfortunately, a nine pin. Yep. Oh, and she misses it. Yep, and that is probably going to do it here in yeah. our first match. Yep. There's that red button. A couple of marks here in the seventh and eighth frame, and Carrie Smith will be moving on. But hey, on this on this brutal pattern today, Amber McLeod making the step ladder is, is huge. Mm -hmm. That should be a big confidence boost to her moving forward. And Rick Strader has won the giveaway. Nice, congratulations! congratulations. Make sure you check your email. Marketing team will send you an email, and they will hook you up with that T-shirt once you give them your information. Just give it a little bit of time. We are on the Fourth of July week, so could be some out of office replies. At the moment. <laughs> yeah. And don't fret, everybody. We will have some more giveaways later on today. Yep. And they're pretty cool, too. We got a signed badge from Brianna Cote, last week's champ. And then the whole stepladder from the. The whole uh, stepladder. The, uh, the women's open. Mm -hmm. Ooh. There's a light shot there. All right. Seven pin. But she just needs to get some pins here. Yeah, stay behind the foul line. Get some count the next couple frames and she moves on. We still have four more regionals to go here on the PWBA Regional Tour, and you are more than welcome to try it out for yourself. Next one's going to be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on July 22nd. Next one a month after that in Rockford, Illinois at the Cherry Bowl, and then another month later at the Twin Cities Regional in Minnesota on September 24th. And then finally, the last regular season regional event will be in Highland Park Lanes in Greeley, Colorado, November 11th. I just got back from there. We sure did. Yeah, that's she's 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 like in between. If she leaks it just a hair, the ball never sees it. If she hits her mark or a board left of it, the ball takes off. So we'll get her to finish this game up, maybe learn something from it, and mm -hmm. then we'll move on. I think a lot of bowlers learned a lot of stuff today, oh, yeah. especially on this pattern. Absolutely. Spare conversion. So Amber going to be walking away with a $525 check. Third place, whether it be Carrie Smith or Summer Jasmine, going to walk away with $700. Second place, $850. First place, double that, $1,700 for the winner today. Not a bad prize fund oh, for not, first place, $1,700. Not, not bad for a day's work. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was a great there you go, shot. Nice shot. Yeah. That was like 11 12 at the arrows, straight, kept it in front of her. So 
So nine nine pins wraps it up right here. Mm -hmm. There it is. Hey, it's a pretty good game from Kerry Smith. This would probably yeah. win most of these matches here today. <laughs> Well, you mentioned uh, Summer's 260 game. That was mm -hmm. high game of the tournament. The second highest game was uh, Amber McLeod's 242. Is that what you said she bowled? Yep, 242 yep. for Amber. That was the That's second like highest seven. of the whole tournament. Actually, I think Amber had two, two of the three highest games, 233, 242. Looks like she stuck at the foul line on that one, tugged it. But this is just filling filling frames to finish this one out. Yep. It's already over. So. Maybe try something if you want here on your fill. You yeah. might as well. Absolutely. I don't want to say it's a guarantee, but if I had to guess, I would say Summer's going to play a little bit right oh, of yeah. where Carrie is. And it'll be interesting to see how it turns out because carrie has been left this entire game amber's been left this entire game to see how it affects summer's line if at if any yeah so summer is down there practicing right now just a couple shots to finish up here yeah when when summer was down here practicing uh she was still on a gray ball from motive and she was playing like five six seven where these girls are playing you know 12 to 15 16 ish So if anything, Summer Summer will have a little bit of fresh out where she's playing, except for what she burned up in practice. And they may have created a little bit of hold for her too, playing where they're playing. That was random. Amber went up there and bowled, and they gave her a seven miss miss. <laughs> yeah. Didn't know you got an extra shot on your uh, your tenth yep. frame fill ball. If you don't mark. And that will do it. 216 for Carrie Smith to Amber's 142. So this is interesting. Summer Jasmine, the two seed, appears to have elected to start this match on the left lane. You know, the best part about these kind of events is that, you know, you typically get your open bowlers that come in and want to bowl on, you know, a fun Sunday evening, a fun activity with the family. And then they come in and say, hey, guys, sorry, we're actually closed right now for an event. We've got a PWBA regional. Yep. And they're standing around watching. Summer is deep. She's really deep. Ten pin. And then they come in and say, yeah, but you're more than welcome to watch. And, you know, a handful of them said, okay, why yeah. not? Let's watch some free events and then we Absolutely. get to go bowl. Ten pin for summer. All right, covers are spare. Yep. Yeah, Carrie. Carrie's going to have to. Uh, she's going to have to replicate the first game against Summer because I think Summer has a great look to the pocket. For sure, and it's very interesting because we saw her better games take place early in the day on the fresh. Yeah. And now she is very deep, deeper than we almost saw her at the end of the day today. Oh. Carrie's got to pull out a piece of tape. I think Norm Duke is calling. Yep. Tape. <laughs> All right, Kerry Smith to start game two. That one 
seem to come off her hand weird. Maybe she shouldn't have took that piece of tape out. <laughs> and a washout. And a washout. And she has to she has to uh, keep her brain going on this one because with Summer playing left of her, she's going to start pushing oil out to her her little line right there around the 14, 15 board. Oh, look at that. Kerry Smith just shot a 32. Six gutter. That was weird. Did you see that up there? That was weird. The scoreboard just totally whacked out. <laughs> And now Summer's got an eight split up there, and she didn't even throw a shot. Yeah. Don't know what's going on. I don't either. I'm confused. Oh, there we go. A 35 down for Carrie Smith. I'm confused by their tactics. <laughs> I'm so confused. We haven't seen this all day. Yeah. Well, since we've got a little bit of time, Elizabeth Weeks finished in six. We already mentioned Brianna Rogers just missing out by two pins. Had a really, really strong finish, 193, 216, 204. Elizabeth Weeks, 204, 188, 178, missed by five pins. Kayla Hicks shot a 166 in her final game. She finished seventh to finish at minus 91. Christina Cato, minus 92. Mallory Clark in ninth, and minus 97. Marissa Allison, minus 99. Kimberly Brown, Emily Kyle, Morgan Cooper, Rose Gowanlock, Lindsey Brown, Samantha Knight, Farron Schneider, Kayla Bandy, Jennifer Nussbaum, Dana File, and those are your cashers. Minus 127 was that final cash line. Top 20 bowlers here. Wow, Summer shot 290. She threw nice <laughs> game. Our <laughs> final score, 290 to 45. <laughs> 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 That's got to be the biggest margin of victory ever. All right, they're going to reset the uh, computers here and yep. see if we can get this fixed. Uh, you want to put that um, pattern back up on the yeah, screen? Yeah, absolutely. People it's are asking about it. It's, sure. It's a 42-foot uh, pattern, uh, two-to-one ratio, um, kind of designed just for this tournament. Uh, doesn't really have a name to it. And uh, it played <laughs> – it played uh, – really tough this week it sure did i mean that two to one was just being a little gracious there <laughs> yeah the start of the day or i'm sorry this whole day kind of reminded me of the start of the senior u.s open for you guys you guys really didn't yeah. have much swing room Nothing. not much miss room but as the day went on it got easier here no, no chance no did chance. not get easier whatsoever no like you said 42 feet and these bowlers are playing really deep comparatively to what we saw them play this morning and, of course, if you want to check out those qualifying standings and the final standings after eight games, PWBA.com has all the info for you. All right, I think we're back on track here. They're going to reset these lanes, and uh, I think we're good to go. All right. Don't forget, everybody, still one more giveaway to happen. We'll do it right after this game finishes up and right before our final match. Naja Owens waiting in the wings. She is practicing down there on lanes 27 and 28. All right, waiting for some pins to reset here, and I think we are now good to go. All right. Getting the okay from our tournament director, Damon. Great shot. Oh, just a ring 10. I mean, that's uh, that's what you play when you play those straight yep. lines from the center of the lane. I mean, those, those ring 10 pins are very, very common, especially when you bowl in a house like this one where the carry is already hard to begin with. No pun intended. <laughs> carry Smith. Yeah. Carry, carry. And we'll take a look at that shot one more time just to get an idea of she covers the why spare. that 
10 pin was left. So take a look at her line. She's playing pretty straight up, right around 13, 14, 15. Pretty straight, but watch that ball. Look at that ball just slightly deflect as it enters that pocket. And once yeah. it deflects, you know, that six pin's going to be sent around that 10 pin. And that is why you see that 10 pin. And that's why you see a lot of the 10 pins here today is because the balls just aren't driving through as much as the bowlers may want them to. Right. But somewhere on the other oh, hand, there's some revs. Right. That she sent that one way out. Way out. Two, four, Two. six, ten. Yep. And they need to change this. There you go. They changed the score. Gave her a five count. Said the five pin was supposed to be there too. <laughs> yeah, that well, happened earlier too. Yeah, that is uh that would be a uh phenomenal leave for somebody like Summer Jazz. Is phenomenal the word for that? <laughs> yeah. I, don't know. I think that would be phenomenal if it ever happened. That's something that you leave with a six pound bowling ball at three miles an hour. Nice and she bear. gets it. Nice. And that got the crowd up on their feet. A little bit of a round of applause for Summer. Take another look at that spare. Hey, Chase. Yeah. A question for you. Sure. When does Belmo bowl? Uh, he, he was eliminated. It was. Yeah, he, yep. was, he was eliminated. He finished minus 320. Yeah. So he never even made it. He went even close to the cut line. So he's already done for the day, Craig. Elliot. Kyle Sherman's on lane 33 and 34. Yeah. In this 32 lane house. Now, Summer, wow. that was okay. That was interesting. That was, yeah, she missed left bad, and it grabbed early. She sure did, and again, we're, I feel like it's early, but I'm kind of having the same thoughts about that shot as we did for Amber shots early in her match because she was just super deep, and we kind of questioned it a little yeah. bit just because there's it hasn't been broken down in the middle of the lane that deep. And here's another shot, or look at that shot from Summer. That one just had no chance. I don't think that ball got right of 17. Yeah. But it did strike, and it is an X up on the board, and it is a seven-pin lead for Jasmine. Carey pulled that one all the way. It's a solid lead, though, Yeah. for as tough of a shot as that was, 3-6. I don't know if she she pulled it that bad. That ball looked like it actually grabbed really early. You think it's just grabbing in the fronts a little I, I bit think again? It, I think it's starting to grab in the fronts. That I makes mean, sense. And we yeah. did see that all day today. So Yeah, and then that ba the bad part about it is if she makes a small adjustment left off of it, the ball will never see it mm -hmm. and miss the head pin. So in that case, would you kind of maybe pull an asymmetrical pearl out of your bag I just would, to give it a little bit of length? Yeah, I would I would pull a different ball out. Maybe she chops the spare. Oh. Yeah, I would go to something else, something a little tamer, something that's going to be a little cleaner. Here's another look at that shot over here. She's throwing a mindset that looks like it's got about 800 on it. Yeah, she it did, did looks like she pulled it a board or two, but you're absolutely right. It did look to catch yeah. quite early there in the fronts. Carrie is throwing a mindset. Brunswick mindset. Mm -hmm. With a good amount of surface on it. And she tugged out one yep. and got away with the Brooklyn strike. A couple of Brooklyns right in a row on lane 17. Yeah. Eye for an eye. Our extra shot over here. Looks like Summer Jasmine is throwing the uh, the new motive ball, the EJ Tackett ball. She got a handful of that one. Nicely done. Gets it to come in. Good shot. Double up there. Gives Summer a 30-pin lead through three now. Yep. Thank you all for being subscribers of Bowl TV. And, of course, we have plenty and plenty and plenty of events for the rest of this year for you, including a couple PBA 60 events. We've got the PBA 50 World Series of Bowling coming up later this month in Jackson, Michigan. we got a, the entire PBA 50 tour schedule left to go. we got the P WBA Tour Championship in Iowa. 
Another nice shot. Great Very shot. Very nice. Great shot. Yeah, we got, I'm pretty sure that uh, with Naja making the number one seed here, I think we got picked up a couple more subscribers today. I think Give so. Give a shout out to those guys out there watching. All right. See, we don't even have to do the work. The bowlers do the work. Absolutely. As long as we get different bowlers up there and we get bowlers that people want to watch, those guys really get us those subscribers. So we thank the bowlers, of course. Absolutely. Take another look at this shot before Carrie delivers her fifth frame. Nicely done. Okay, she moved left. Nice shot. Gets the 10 out there. Yeah, she, she moved her feet left. She kept the target, but I, her, her feet were it, a yeah. good two to three boards left. It's a good move. Yeah, it very good It keeps her move. in this match. Big double. Summer, though, still ahead by that 30 pins. It was 40, but Carrie just cut it down. It's a big shot here in the match. Yeah. If Carrie can continue... To string together some strikes, she'll force Summer to continue to do that. But if she doesn't, Summer can step up with a big opportunity to gain a lot of pins in her next two shots. Good shot. Yep. Nice. Yeah, very good shot. Two back-to-back -back very good shots. And she's, uh, she's made the adjustment and uh, executed the shots well. Yep. Getting that tunnel is the most important thing for her right now on this shot as she continues to make that move left. And as long as she can see that move and it doesn't burn up too much in the front, that 10 pin is going to be the pesky pin Absolutely, for her yeah. today. Absolutely, gonna She's going to have to, her next move probably would have to ball down mm -hmm. to something a little bit cleaner because the further left she goes, the more she's gonna got a chance of leaving that 10 pin. Yep, especially with an asymmetric piece. And yeah. Lane 17 just shut off and the rack is down. And Summer just said, eh. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to go I'm third strike anyways. Ten back. Who cares? Yeah, whatever. She said, Lane Schmain, light swipes. <laughs> She's fine. And we're going to have to get a fix here on lane 17, though, as well as the score up there on lane 6. What, it looks like, yeah, the 5-pin just continuously up there, no matter the shot, no yeah. matter the leave. It looks like it's just not detecting the 5-pin well because they're going to have to change that score up there on her 6th frame as well to a strike. Yeah, I think uh, somebody was saying that one of the sensors went bad on uh, 18, and it's not picking up, or it's it's picking up a ghost pin. And Summer's going to back off for a little bit. Just take a drink of water. Yep. And Just restart. It's all good. Five forty-eight Eastern Time here in Aberdeen, North Carolina. We are at Sand Hills Bowling Center. It's been a wonderful time here in the short one day that we have to be here. Unfortunately, we uh, couldn't hold a week-long event here, but a regional will do. It'll suffice. Got here yesterday, set up. They were more than happy to help me plug in the uh, Ethernet cords, run the cables, and. We got it all set up in a short amount of time, and we're here today. No issues. We've been having a good day. Well, other so than the up you updating guys. computer for <laughs> two games. That's true, but that was on our end. Yeah. They've done nothing wrong here. Right, absolutely. They uh, <laughs> took a little longer than it, th it, it it lied to us. All right, she gets that one out, and oh, ooh, that's a weird. I think that was actually the seven pin. Uh, so if you were to tell me that that ball going down the lane was going to leave a pin, whether it be the 4, or the 5, the 7, or the 10, I would 100% believe you. wasn't yeah. a great shot, came up late. Yeah. But if you would have told me it was going to be a 4-pin, now that's <laughs> where I would have questioned you a little bit. Right. And after she converts it, we'll take another look so everybody can see the craziness that it just unfolded on lane 17. Oh, and she missed it. Whoa. That lets, that lets carry right back into this match. Yeah, here's that leave. See that ball just kind of rolls out there as it enters the pocket. But then there's the miss, and not much else to say other than she just tugged it. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, so got that one in. Did it hold? Nice shot. Yeah. Very nice shot from Kerry Smith there to put together a four-bagger and take advantage of the open from Summer. She can take the lead with a strike here, right? Three-pin lead. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. She can. Right now she's down seven, but with another double up there, she takes the lead. 243 max for Summer. And 246 max for Carrie Smith. Now, just because her max is higher doesn't mean she's in the lead. Still got to take advantage of these strikes here yep. and continue to pile them on one each other. She shot a 216 in game number one, and Will look to be a very ga high game and maybe one of the higher ones we're going to see. Might not be Tugged. the highest. And Tugged. Nine pin Brooklyn. Yep. All right, she's got a cover to spare. So after all that, we're going to have a really tight finish here. Summer Jasmine still in the lead by single digits. Yep. Eight pins at the moment. If Carrie converts this. And covers it, no problems. So eight pin match with two frames to go. Mm -hmm. Or three for uh, Summer. Eight pin match, here we go. This is what bowling is made of. We've seen Summer throw a few really, really good shots in a row. Even that four pin, still a really good shot yeah. just to get to the pocket on this tough, tough pattern. And that's yep. another good one there. Light seven. seven pin. Light four pin on the left lane, light seven on the right. Oh, no. Oh, she oh. gets it. Whew. I thought she tugged that one. Man. Funny part is it was the same spot of, the, of her last spare. Yeah. See that ball just maybe go a half a foot longer than she would have liked it to. Just slides a little bit. But she cleans up her spare. Still up eight. A strike here, and she cannot be shut out. Oh, but no. Eight, okay, yeah. that 8-pin helps a little bit. 2-8-10, very unlikely. 2-10, a little more possible. And see, this is what we, were, what we were watching earlier. There was a few girls early on today, front four, front five, and then the shot just went away. And, you know, some of them didn't even shoot 200. And this is what's happening here. The lanes are changing so quickly. I mean, that was that was actually a good shot. It just did not see it at the end of the pattern. Oh, uh, she misses it. Well, now this changes a lot. Yes. For Carrie Smith, Summer Jasmine max 209, Carrie Smith max 225. So if Carrie can just throw in a double somewhere in this match, she is good to go. She can go nine spare strikes out. She gets to 214, and that would be enough. Summer's fate is in Carrie's hands. Yep. Carrie's fate is in, in her own hands. <laughs> That's right. That's a good shot. Yep. Nice. Very good shot. And not a nine. Don't worry. It'll be changed to a strike. There we go. So a double here from Carey, and that all but does it. She's getting a good count if she can strike here on the first ball in the tenth. Anything else, and Summer will have an opportunity to move on to the final match. Strike nine spare would give her a 2-14. That's enough. It would be. Mm -hmm. 
It's got a carry. There. Yes, nice shot, Carrie Smith. That's it. That is very nice. Carrie's just going to need good count here. Looks like she's going to need six, no, five spare. Five spare gets her to 210. Yep. And no matter whether she gets it or not, no matter whether Summer wins or not, these two bowlers here are the epitome of grinding out a day. Not only in the eight games of qualifying, but these two games here, they were grinding those out. I mean, they were hitting mark after mark. They threw some great shots in the middle of that game. But Carrie's just going to need five spare or just some good count here. That'll that do does it. it. Nicely that done, it. Carrie Smith. Carrie Smith going to move on to the finals here at the 2023 PWBA Pinehurst Regional. That'll do it. 224 the finish for Carey. And much love between the two competitors, as always, out here on this tour. And Naja Owens is going to be bowling Carey Smith for the title. Naja down here, getting a final look at these shots. Summer goes strike, gutter, gutter, not really. There we go. All right, let's throw a pole up there. And let's see who you guys got in this one. A poll and a giveaway. Oh, yeah. We'll do the poll first here. See what everybody's thinking, who's going to win this final match. I think if you're Naja Owens right now, you're really liking what you're seeing out there, just based on the fact that she bowled so well at the end of the day yeah. and how deep these competitors got here in this step letter match. I think that's a really big advantage to her game, knowing that even though it's fresh, that they're going to be pretty deep comparatively to where they were at the start of the day today. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, she, she can't wait to get up there and throw a couple of shots because uh, – I think she's got a good game plan coming into this, watching what they were doing. Mm -hmm. She sat over here for the last four frames of this match. Yep. And it looks like Megan has won that giveaway. Congrats, Congratulations. Megan. Megan, same deal. Make sure you take a look at your Bowl TV email. The marketing team will send you an email getting all the information they need from you so they can send you your wonderful prize from today. And we appreciate everybody tuning in here at Bull TV. That was our last giveaway, but we got a great match ready to roll on. Carrie Smith, Naja Owens here in the PWBA Pinehurst Regional Final. Chase Kaufman here to call it with you, along with Chuck Ritchie Jr., just about an hour and a half away, gracious enough to come out and watch. Yeah. Hope you're having a good time here. I sure I am. I'm having a great time. Yeah. As the one seed Najee elected Carey to start the match, and Carey will start with a light seven pin. Yeah, she uh, she tried a different ball. I think it. I want to say it was a uh, tundra fire, with a lot of surface on it. She tried that as a fill ball. Didn't Here's look, another look at this. Didn't look so good. So she's back into that mindset. Mm -hmm. 
And spares it up. So we've gone through the results of our two, three, and four seed, and we'll go through the games of Naja here in just a second. We've already mentioned she was by far the top competitor in those last three games, 217, 206, 215. Well, that's a good shot. Very good there shot go. there. 182, 192, 167 for Naja's first three games. So not a great start. She was about minus 60. But then picked it back up, 208, 194, and then those last three games I mentioned, all in the two teens, to finish at minus 19 to grab the one seed here today, averaging 197. And Chuck, you're kind of partly familiar with Naja here. She's mm -hmm. from Rally. Uh, how many have you seen her bowl in multiple tournament, oh, many yeah. tournaments around here? Yeah, she. Uh, when I was a member of the UBA, I saw her a lot tournaments and uh, I see her every once in a while up in uh, Greensboro some sweepers that are run up there and she got that one left and Almost she's messengered out the six yeah she's lucky that's all she left it was a little high but uh, yeah I mean you know she's she's always near the top man every time I bowl something that she's involved with man she's always near the top very consistent very good shot maker All right, cleans up her spare. It was no guarantee that Naja was going to be the one seed either. She had not sat in the one seed position all day long until the second half of her last game. She had a 96 in the sixth in game number eight and then put together a five-bagger just to get into the two teens. It was a great, great game bowled by Naja in the final stages of qualifying today. As she finished up, she immediately came back ran to her family, gave a big hug. Yeah. Well-deserved hug, that's for sure. Lots of love on Facebook, too. Oh, she got that one right. Yep. Yeah. She knew it right she away. It. I, I, that's a good leave, to be honest. Yeah. For as bad as she missed there, I think a 1-2 is a perfectly fine leave, especially in the second frame. Only going to be down two pins if she can convert. We talked about the USBC Queens event that Naja bowled in that, and that was her first PWBA event. Carrie Smith also bowled in that. Ended up finishing in the top 30, tied for 33rd, if you will. Okay. So she won one of her matches. All right. Eventually it was eliminated in the loser's bracket. All that information, of course. PWBA.com, schedule, season stats, next year's schedule, the regional schedule, rules, FAQs, anything you need right up there. Past champions. And again, you may be wondering why more uh, national tour competitors don't compete here on this stage. Well, they don't, they limit these fields to uh, women without a PWBA title. So if you own a PWBA title, you are not eligible for these events. And isn't it like the top 50 in points or something like that, or top 30 in it points? It could be. I just know that for sure. Yeah, I think uh, that's got some bearing on it, too, is where, they gotcha. say, where, where they're at in the, in the uh, point standings. And that, of course, is just so we can grab some new faces here for the PWBA National Tour, because if you missed it, I mentioned it very early in the show, but anybody who wins a PWBA Regional gets to go and bowl the PWBA Regional Championship in December in Florida. And the winner from that will have all their entry fees paid for for the entire 2024 PWBA National Tour season. So a very, very cool event that the USBC and the PWBA are hosting here. Yeah. Letting a lot of competitors get into this field, dip their toes, and see if they can compete out here. I think the guys would love something like that. You think they wouldn't? Oh, absolutely. Win one tournament and your, all your entries for the following year are paid? I mean, Man. they could do that now when in reality. I mean, they have the regional players invitational, and yeah. that's uh, as Naja Senplan just Ooh. a little bit out. Leaves the bucket with a seven. 
as uh, the regional players invitational includes points leaders from each region as well some qualifiers from individual tournaments that are decided on by the regional themselves each region yeah. there's uh, certain tournaments you can qualify straight through so they could they could eventually add something like that which would be very cool yeah oh that's got to hurry hook oh and it did all right there we go so Naja and the count Down gives her a two. one yeah two pin deficit now Judy, that is correct. If you do have a national title, you still are allowed to bowl regionals on the uh, in the men's tour, and any lady can, or any woman can actually bowl regional events as well. It's not just yeah, just for men. It's a good shot. Nice. Very good Gets shot. Gets the ten out. Naja, still down two, but a strike to work with now. Yep. When she enters the fifth. Yeah, not a bad uh, shot there. No. You could just kind of tell. We've talked about it last game. Just kind of burns up a little bit in the front a little bit, even if she doesn't miss. And that one just kind of skated right towards that head pin the entire time. Four yeah. Pin. Uh-oh, she pulled that one, and it hooked yep. away from it. And she knew it right away, too. Yep. Missed up there for Carrie Smith. Now, if you're nausea, that's what you take advantage of, especially with a strike already up there on the board in the fourth frame. She can increase her lead to 30 pins. Right now it sits at 10 pins, no matter what Carrie does here. This is almost a must strike for Carrie here. She's got to get her feet back underneath of her. She hasn't struck yet in this match. Mm -hmm. And she's thrown good shots. Yeah. Just hasn't yeah. struck. That looks good. Yep, and better she shot. she gets them all 10 down again this time. So. Nicely done. All right. Let's see how Naja can handle this situation and put some pressure on Carey. Throw another strike here. Take another look at this Carey Smith shot here. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's got a hurry. Yes, nice. there's a nice double. I really like Naja's ball reaction, I too. Do too. She's got a little bit of shine on her ball. It's able to get through the fronts and really get some back end on that ball. Yeah. Able to play that line and not really worry too much about carry. Yeah, Ca it's, it's carry down the lane. It's not carry right. <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she, her ball's storing a little more energy than Carrie's is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Carrie's got to be high flush basically to carry anything on the corners. Naja's got a little bit of wiggle room down there with that, with that shiny ball. Currently a 20 pin lead. Can make it 30 though here with another double. It's, it's got a, yep, that right. one. You yeah, were, that you were about to left. say it and I could tell it, that, that, that one had to go. Hold. Yeah, that one had yep. to hold a little bit, but uh, yeah, there's not much hold in the middle.
Just step up and cover the spare. Got a nice little lead here, just protecting. There we go. All right. So now we have Carrie stepping back up. She's on a strike, hoping to uh, cut into this deficit. This game right here for Carrie kind of has the feel of the last game of qualifying. We saw her on this pair just kind of really grinding through this game just trying to hit the pocket, just trying to double if she can, and she did eventually double late in the game, but it wasn't a great start for her in game eight, and I'm not seeing a lot of great shots here yeah. today. That's pretty final good. Match. There we go, except for that one. Right. So back-to-back -back strikes for Carrie, S and, uh, Carrie Smith, and yep. she, uh, I think she I think she moved a little bit further left with her feet. She, It's like it, she's getting to that point where, like every other frame, it's starting to break down, and she's got to make a small mm -hmm. adjustment with her feet but stay in that same zone. So for as much as we've been talking about Naja really taking advantage of this match, all of a sudden, Carrie's down just eight pins because of that double. Right. And she can actually take the lead here. It's left. Yeah. Looks like she st stuck a little bit at the foul line. It's a 3-9. It's uh, not an easy pickup on this pattern. Because you've got that uh, little out of bounds out there. You can't get it too far to the right. All right. She covered it. 10-pin right, nice match. 10-pin match. Coming down to the wire. Naja getting one last whiff of, of the fan, her personal fan down there. Grabs her chamois. Couple throws of the rosin bag and she is ready to roll. That one's got to get down there, too. And there she go. kicks Gets out that the 10. 10 out. Yep. Naja has struck all but once on this right lane, and the one time she did not strike, it was a five spare, which really killed her in count. She's got a little bit of hold on on uh, 18. Mm -hmm. 17, not so much, because she didn't miss that far left the last time she was over there, and that ball just went straight through the face. Small adjustment here on the left lane. I think she'll be okay. A double would be huge right here. Mm -hmm. Up 10 would make it up 20 with a double. That looks good. Very good back. shot. Very good shot for Naja. Yeah, I think she. I think she actually. She made that uh, adjustment with her feet because she's in the same same target area, but she moved a little bit left with her feet. to got the got the ball to float just a little bit further down the lane. Great shot. Great shot. Let's see how Carrie answers. Well, I think it's safe to say at some point in the rest of these three frames, Carrie is going to need a double somewhere. Yeah. Doesn't have to be here. She's got to get something going. That's a good that shot. Got to right carry. Got to carry. Yeah, now two it's pin. the other sleeper. Yeah. Oh, just the two pin. It looks like the two eight. But yeah, I mean, you kind of saw that ball just travel a little bit out. And the, with the line she's playing, it's not. There's very little, very little forgiveness in yeah. that line when you're playing that straight up and you miss a couple of boards out. I mean, a two pin is almost the best you can hope for in a right. shot like that. Yeah, I mean, two, four, eight, ten would. She could have easily left that. So. All right, max score now for Carrie Smith, two twelve. Max score for Naja, 243. Mm -hmm. 
So Carrie's, Carrie's going to have to set herself up here. Yeah, she's going to have to double here because right now Naja's just got to stay clean. Yeah. If Naja goes nine spare, nine spare, she shoots a 2-12, so I believe. Yeah, Naja would shoot a 2-12. She goes nine spare, nine spare strike. Meanwhile, Carrie's got to strike out to get to that 2-12. That's left. Oh, oh wow. and she just crushes it. She said, ah, all right, well, wow. what are you going to do? Yeah. She keeps her in the match. Keeps her in the match. Very gives much her, so. Gives her a fighting chance. But here's the thing. Naja, her fate is in her hands. She can just get this one right here and all but end it. Get the strike here, and you're in good shape, Naja. Yep. Just throw it like you did there in the seventh or in the eighth, and you're good. If not, Carrie Smith still has a fighting chance. Oh, that's good. Yep. That's good. Oh, oh there's a, a ten, weak pin. 10 pin. Not going to fall. All right. Spare here. Still in her own hands. Oh, yeah. Nine spare. As we said, nine spare, nine spare strike gives her the 212 and would force Carrie Smith to strike out. Oh, covers it. Nicely nice. done. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Come she on. knows the situation. Good shot right here. Good shot in the 10th. Goes back, grabs her puff ball, her rosin bag. Couple taps, grabs the chamois. Same process, every shot. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, Carrie Smith on the bench, just asking for a chance. That's all you ask for as a bowler. Just give me a chance. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, but all I'm asking for is a chance. That's what you're asking for for Carrie Smith. It's good. Trips gets it the out. Seven, gets the four to fall. All right. One Naja's more for the title right here. Yep. She gets one this one and one. Title. She needs 11 pins. And she will take home the title. Any 10 pins here, any spare, and Carrie Smith will have a chance. Her supporting gallery can't even watch right now. Yeah. Naja for the win. Tugs it. All right. 6-10. Carrie right. Smith going to have a chance. But if you're Naja here, it's important to get your two to at least guarantee, sure to have your, all yep, three. guarantee yourself a roll off. At least. Chase Kaufman here along with Chuck Ritchie Jr. at the PWBA Pinehurst Regional Final Championship match. Final frame. Naja. Gets, gets both. Okay. <laughs> a little bit of a sigh of relief there for Naja. Done all you can do right now if you're Naja. Yeah. Now it's up to Carrie. And yeah. Carrie asked for a chance, and she's going to get it here. Yeah, and the last time she was up here, she hit the pocket but left the 10 pin. Mindset in hand. Mm -hmm. She hasn't strayed away from it. All step ladder. See if she can strike again. That's left, but is it going to hold? Got carry. Gets the seven to fall. Nice. Carry continuing. That one shim just carry a little fest, bit. if you will. Yeah. Still has to have all three of them. Yeah. So. Take another quick look at that shot. See, she's just pointing at the pocket, asking for it to move. The five pin tried to hit the seven, stopped by the four, but then the four just does the dirty work anyways. All right. 
Wish we had a camera on Naja right now. She's just like head down. Got her fan blowing on her. Not looking. No need to anymore. Yeah. Needs it. That's left. Gets a left. Six oh. pin. Naja Owens. Naja Owens is, is a champion. champion. Congratulations to Naja Owens. PWBA champion. You see her there. Here you she's, go. Yeah. There she is. She's smiling. She's, she's – I don't think she believes it yet. <laughs> she's uh, – <laughs> that is awesome. She still can't believe it. Yeah, she cannot <laughs> believe this. Well, hug. Great match. Great, Great match. match. Great step ladder. Trophy presentation here. I'll tell you what. And no worries, we're going to get Naja in here just for a quick few questions. So no need to go anywhere. Stay right here. We appreciate you guys all being here if you are going to head out, though. But if you'd like to stay here and listen to Naja just for a few quick minutes, we'd appreciate it if you want to stick around here. But a great final match nonetheless. 2-12 to 201 finish. Kerry Smith had a chance and really, really threw some great shots in that match. Just too many nine counts, but a great tournament overall oh, absolutely. for both women. Yes. And I think she's still in half disbelief here. Grabbing some pictures. And let's do this real quick. Hey, Chuck, would you mind turning this scoreboard camera around to us? I will us? do it, awesome. yes. Awesome. I'm going to turn you All down. Right. All right, bringing Naja in here. All right, Chuck's going to adjust the camera here. And let's, uh, let's add this in here. Give us one second here, Naja. We appreciate you being here. We got quite the uh, high up view here, but we can see it. <laughs> Naja, first off, wh what's the feeling like right now? Obviously, that we heard this is only your second uh, professional event ever, and obviously you go out here and win. It's got to be one heck of a day for you, right? Yes. I'm <laughs> I wasn't expecting this, to be yeah. honest, so I'm no, very happy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with 60 bowlers in the – well, 59 bowlers in the field, only the top four – make it to the step ladder. You had a heck of a finish in your last three games. Tell me about those last three games. You went two teens, two teens, 2-0. Two oh. You even went back five, back six over there in game number eight just to get to that one seed. Tell me about your kind of progress throughout the day. Yeah, so I think it was around game five where I was kind of like, I'm just not executing, and that's all I wanted to do when I got here was execute the shot. That's I didn't care about where I finished. I just wanted to know I, sure. I threw a great shot, and – I just made one small adjustment in the fifth game, so I wasn't so on top of my target anymore. And then I was just letting the ball do the work. And I said, just make your spares. And I was making them. So. Absolutely. <laughs> so here in this step ladder match, we kind of expected a lot of the bowlers to be start a little further right like they yeah. did kind of on the fresh. And then as we saw, we saw Summer get really deep, even though she really did well on the fresh today. What was your kind of thoughts as you saw the uh, two through four seeds kind of progress on these lanes and play as deep as they did. Were you kind of excited to see that they were so far left? Actually, yes, because I feel like earlier I was trying to play that super right, mm -hmm. and I was throwing it kind of like I would miss or I would overthrow it. So moving in, I feel we had a better look 
inside sure. throughout the day. Absolutely. And Naj, you're going to be able to compete in the uh, final tournament at the end of the year in December now in Florida. Uh, the winner, is this the first you're hearing of this? Wait. This, this is the first you're hearing of this, isn't it? I, I'm trying to – I didn't know what to expect. Okay, so, Naja, <laughs> here's the deal. So the winner of each of these regional events, there's nine throughout the year, the winner is eligible to bowl the PWA Regional Championship to be held in Florida December 7th through the 9th. So that tournament is wow. with those nine bowlers, which you are now one of. You are eligible to bowl in that tournament, and the winner of that tournament – has the opportunity to get their entry fees paid for the Professional Women's Bowlers Association National Tour for the entire 2024 season. And if this is the first year hearing of this, here's another thing I'm just throwing <laughs> on you. But it's it's a great opportunity. Tell me what that would mean if you were able to bowl on the t uh, Women's Tour for a full season. Nonetheless, being able to bowl for it for free. Tell me about what that would mean to you. <laughs> Even though this is the first time you're hearing it. <laughs> Honest, wow. Yeah. Um, this is a moment in my life where I just wanted to try it, mm -hmm. and I felt like I've, I've had people around me that have helped me get to this point, and they all believed in me. So it's like me finally believing in myself. Absolutely. So to know that that's even available, it's crazy. For sure. And Sorry. is there anybody you wanted to thank out here? I know you had quite the support system out here. <laughs> I mean, everyone in the UVA. Some were watching. My parents. I have. You know, Wanda, Adam, Perfect Fit. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> it's a lot of people. Chris Hans, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's just a lot of great people in the bowling community that want to see me out here. For sure. Well, Naja, you had quite the support system in the chat. You had a lot of people rooting for you. Wow. And I know a lot <laughs> of people back home are very proud of you. So congratulations on your title. Best of luck in the future. I know it's not ending here. And even though you just wanted to dip your toes in this event, yeah. it's very <laughs> impressive what you've done here today. So thank you for being with us. Congratulations on the win. Go hug your family one more time. All right. Thank really you. thank you. Have a good one. Well, you heard it there. Naja Owens with the trophy in hand. And she, uh, she is in tears, had a great, great tournament this weekend just to get to that one seed in the last three games. Really fought through the day. You heard her say it. She really just tried to get through that transition. And once she got to the point of the day where she was able to just execute, there was one heck of a tournament. Well, guys, I think that is just going to do it here for us here at the 2023 PWBA Pinehurst Regional in Aberdeen, North Carolina. Well, we'll put it back on here, because why not, right? Chase Goffman here with you. I've been here all day, all day yesterday setting up, but it was one heck of a tournament. I was excited to come to this tournament because you get to see so many cool faces, so many new faces, just like Naja Owens, who's gonna be competing at the PWBA Regional Showdown later in December. We've got four more women's regionals for you the rest of this year. We've got plenty of action on Bull TV the rest of the year. PBA 50, Collegiate, PWBA, PBA events. It's all right here for you on Bull TV. So for Chuck Ritchie Jr., Patrick Martinez, I'm Chase Coffin. We wanna thank you for watching here on Bull TV. TV. We want to thank the competitors for such a great day of competition. And of course, we want to thank you guys out there in the Bull TV land for obviously subscribing and everything else along the way. We love that you're so interested in the giveaways. We love the chat. We are really excited to have you here, and we're glad to have you here for the PWBA Regional in Pioneers. So thank you guys for Chuck Ritchie, Patrick Martinez. I'm Chase Kaufman. Have a great rest of your day. And remember, on Bull TV, bowling lives here. Good night, everybody.